Hey guys, what's up and welcome to the channel on the Shotgun Shogun. Today we're going to be talking about Blair Witch Project Assyria. By that I mean Briar Witch Assyria, the new ML5. And one of the things that I thought was really, really cool about her is the fact that she has the built-in Rangar's Drink on her S2, basically. Actually, it's a Rangar's Drink and Uberius Tooth uh, because it affects all of her stuff, right? So... We got the numbers for it, right? And the data miners pulled it all out. And her mod modifiers actually look pretty decent compared to uh, Holiday Euphine. And I think that they do serve completely different purposes. Now, the one thing that was kind of funny is that they release a bunch of evasion units. And then they release a unit with... with increased hit chance. Of course, we did not see that coming in the slightest at all. And by that, I mean, everybody saw that coming. Uh, now, math's calculator over here, the if the site that if I could marry a website, I would have already proposed, um, has already updated everything. And this is going to be another damage by the numbers video where we're going to go through everything. Uh, we're going to take a look at theoretical bills. We're going to see how much damage it can do based on the calculator. And then we're going to show in game some of my stats and what we can achieve with some of my gear. Now, I don't have the best gear in the game, but we'll work with what I have. Now, I think one of the big things with Assyria is there's a couple ways to build her. Some of the things that have been shown are Cleave Assyria, right? And I think that that's actually not a bad build because it did some absolutely nutty damage. Now, I want to amend my video on her. Uh, she does damage, then strips, and then her extra damage comes into play, kind of like a an Uberius Tooth on Soul Bad Guy. And the reason why he is able to dunk on Kron's is because he does his damage, triggers the immortality, strips the immortality, then the tooth damage procs after the fact. So that is how all of that works. She doesn't strip beforehand, uh, but let's get into some of the numbers on her. Now, extra damage from her S2 passive is calculated with the 70% defense penetration. Uh, it does have to be double checked, uh, but every early data mines did, uh, because early data mines didn't confirm that. Now, uh, it's it's safe to say that it is probably going to work the same way coded as drink as Uberius to that penetrate defense 70 percent defense on that and that's why it is pretty pretty broken now i've already seen some threads going around with people that are like Meh, don't use drink on her because it only affects her s3 and then you after her s3 you waste uh you waste your artifact slot well if they're all dead you're you're really not wasting your artifact slot now, are you? Um, I do think that this unit is going to want to be built very similar to a Seaside Bell in terms of just going for straight up attack. So let me show you current my current Seaside Bell. Uh, this is my current Seaside Bell right here. Very high attack, very high defense. Uh, however, I don't think that this is how you are going to 100% be building uh, Assyria because, well, she doesn't get off off turn attacks. So the 124 speed is kind of irrelevant if you are going to be using her as a cleaver of sorts. Um, I don't think that you're going to need as much defense and health because you are going to want to try to one shot absolutely everything that exists. But let's just put, plug these numbers in and see just what kind of damage we're getting with these modifiers. So we're going to get uh, let's see, we're going to go 4296 for attack. Let's put our Rengar's special drink in here. Uh, 248 in the crit damage. She does have 92% crit. So that is going to do, that is going to make, make it so that she is going to most likely crit, right? Um, let's say, okay, we just take that off. Let's say we pushed her forward with an aux slots. Um... We'll just leave them at, let's say you're trying to anti, let's, you know what? No, let's say you're trying to cleave, you're trying to cleave into a normal team, right? You've got increased attack. Uh, we'll just say it's a, a squishy DPS with a thousand, a thousand defense, right? So you maxed out the S3, you max this out and well, your soul burned S3 into an Arius is only going to be 
1875 on this target now that comes from the attack rate of 1.2 the power of 1.1 1 .1, uh the aftermath attack rates 30 percent the aftermath penetrate your aftermath damage is going to be 1378 now is that with or without the drink uh already included in the table let me take drink out and make sure that everything is working fine here okay uh, so you're going to do 1039 with a portrait of the saviors. Uh, let's see here. We'll go back to drink. Um, is that aftermath attack rates 30%? An after the fact voiceover that I did clarify things with math about the calculator. Um, the drink is actually included because both the S2 and the drink um, output the same amount of damage. So if you use the calculator, the drink damage from the artifact is up near the top, and the S2 is in the modifier it's, or in the damage itself separately as the aftermath. So those are combined. I was just a little bit confused, but math set me straight so disregard anything else that i say about that so with soulburn with drink against a team with an arius with these stats you are going to be doing about 10,875 damage soulburn now if you're anti-claving that's going to pretty much wipe the floor with most most things right now also if you're anti-claving you're also not going to have an Arius on the defense. Now, if you can potentially ban their Arius defense holder, you're going to go up to about 14.5k, right? And that's going to be really big. That's going to be a lot of damage there. Now, again, like I said, this isn't um, the best build out there. And if you did put in Elemental Advantage, that's 15.6k. I do think that MLS area is going to be a really good... Um, a really really good cleaver but let's take a look at what the stats would be if i built her for specifically cleaving so we're gonna come back up here right because she's got the same stat line as our seaside bell so we're gonna assume we do already have ringers drink on um let's go with uh do i have a good destro set we let's go crit destro Actually, let's, uh, yeah, let's go crit Destro, and we're going to go with high attack substats, right? Because we want that extra damage. So we'll take this off Chadley. Um, we're going to take this. We're going to go with a crit chance, crit damage chest piece. We'll take that. We'll go with an attack neck, actually. Um, actually, I might have to change that one right there real quick. Uh, this is going to be a lot of attack. Uh, let's go back to, we'll get rid of all. Uh, we have really high crit chance right now, but let's go with critical hit damage on the chest piece. Uh, we'll take this off of Chadley. We need uh, attack main crit damage base. Okay, and then we are going to want some boots. Okay, so we've got this. Okay, so we just up this by quite a bit, right? We're dro we dropped down a fair amount, but we're cleaving, so it doesn't matter. Uh, so let's pop back over and take a look at what kind of numbers we're doing with drink in this setup now um we lost a little bit of crit damage there because well uh we replaced it with a lot of attack right but we're gonna do 52 17 attack we're gonna do 245 critical hit damage now i know it also didn't have i only had 73 percent critical hit there um yeah, feels bad, man. Um, let's see what we can do. Let's say we triple Esther, right? We gave ourselves the 18% um, critical attack imprint because we're we're doing theory crafting here, and that's what's real important. Um, if you maxed out her S3 and soul burned it, you're doing 19,600. 
Uh, even without a soul burn, you're doing 16.5k. That's a lot of damage. That is a, a very fair to moderate amount of damage. Now, let's see what you do through Arius. You're still doing 14.6 thousand damage on an S3 soul burn. Uh, there's not too much out there that that's not going to, especially DPS wise, right? That that's not going to, that's not going to kill. Um, and it's going to overflow onto whoever that main tank is and just probably lay waste to them. Let's say it is their main tank. Let's say they have a 1500 damage or 1500 defense tank. Uh, not only are they going to be taking about 11,000 damage, but they're going to be sucking up 20% of that damage. Let's say, because we'll take Arius off. Uh, they're actually going to be taking 14.5 K and 20% of everybody else's damage. So that's going to be really, really hurting on that main dam on that main tank so as you can see just from cleaving right um that's not even like the, this isn't even like the best cleave damage in the world um this is assuming triple s because you got the plus 18 percent but even at zero percent right um even uh, against a 1500 defense target with no damage reduction that's still 13k damage uh, that is that is pretty pretty spicy. Are you gonna one shot big thick tanks? No, but you're gonna one shot everything else around them because chances are, let's say, like I said, two twelve hundred is my typical bruiser uh, go to. Um, 1200 defense, like fourteen to fifteen k hit points. If you soul burn that S three, they're done. They're gonna be done. That's fifteen point three k. Uh, that's also not including potentially any Oxlots imprints uh, because, well, you're going to have Oxlots and I forget how much his imprint is. I think it's like 10 or 11 or something like that. That's 15.7. Uh, yeah, so that's that's real, real big. And even let's say you don't use drink, right? Let's say you, for some reason you just don't really want to use drink. Let's say you use portrait. That's still 14.8. Well, let's say you don't use drink because, well, let's say you don't have drink, right? Uh, that's still 14.8K. That's real, real big damage right there. I mean, you're still going to want to use this, but yeah. Well, what's other world machinery? If you maxed out other world machinery, um, let's go up to here. That's 15.5 and that is actually not too bad. I didn't actually max out portrait of the saviors. So actually portrait of the saviors is going to do more initial damage than Rangar's special drink against a D uh, against a 1200 defense target. Now through Arius, you're only going to be doing 11.8. Whereas I believe drink is going to be better in that 11.7 just because of the defense ignoring. So you are still going to be able to do quite a bit of damage here, even without the attack imprints, right? Let's say though you did triple S her, that's still 13.3 K damage through the Arius. And that is with your plus 30 portrait of saviors. And this is 13.1 through your, through your Arius with the S3 Soul Burned Rengar's drink. I think that that's real, real big. However, one of the things that I would very much like to run her as, and then if you defense break, everything's obviously, obviously dead deado. Um, so one of the things that I actually want to build with her is more of a speed, a speed DPS bruiser build. So let's go with uh, speed and we'll do... Crit set. Speed crit is typically what I like to run on bruisers because I like to pair them up with um, with cleansers. So it's not too big of a deal. So we're going to give her high attack gear. High critical hit chance gear. Speed attack neck. We'll give her this carrot neck because, well, we're already running two piece crit there and we need some speed gear. So we're going to give her crit health speed and then speed main stat boots. However, 
We don't have much here in the way of defense or effectiveness, so this is going to pop her up to that little bit of defense effectiveness. Now, we do need some... Oh, we don't have critical hit. Or we don't have speed on the ring here as I just passed right on by that. So let's give her this. So this is a good tanky bruiser build. However, you are going to only have 58% chance to crit. How? Uh, but... You are going to be getting a lot of damage from that S2 proc, especially on the S1. So let's run these numbers now. Uh, the, uh, realistically, I would not would like to get her to 100% crit chance, and I think I've got something that I can do that with. Uh, but let's take a look at what these numbers are, are bringing us in. So we're going to just get rid of this. We're going to go up against a tanky bruiser again. Uh, let's do 4476. Um, we are... Pretty quick at 194 speed, so we are going to be cycling quite a bit. 203, let's just not assume that we will actually be getting the uh, crit. We'll take a look at the normal hits here and the overflow damage that we will be getting from those. Uh, we'll assume no attack imprints whatsoever. We got Rangar's Drink, so that's not going to do anything for us on the S1. But I also think that if you are going to be running Rangar's Drink, right, I think that a Rosa would be actually better a rosa or the portrait for hitting early targets uh, i think that those would be very good you're not going to want to really run um por uh, your portrait or other world machinery uh, against those types of teams so now if we come down here we'll assume attack increase we'll assume plus 15 everything uh, your s1 is going to be hitting for 7349 and that's really really big because well that doesn't actually come with the does that change with rangars it shouldn't change with rangars okay yeah it doesn't change with rangars so i mean that's still really really decent damage for an s1 right if it's if it crits right even if out without critting you're still hitting for 4500 which isn't too bad against a bruiser uh it's not the best it's not one shotting anybody but it is still also going to be doing pretty okay damage now if we can get that critical hit chance up that is going to be pretty big now you will be able to open with a really big hit on the s3 soul burn in this build but you are not going to be one shotting most things right so this is also a decent you've got 12 uh, 13k hit points 1200 defense in this build um, this is a pretty okay tanky bruiser setup for this unit um, now let's see for ring I can do critical hit chance let's do this now this is going to drop you down um, a fair bit here right in terms of attack uh, overall that's going to be a pretty big pretty big loss right there but um, what you can do is you can make up for it with uh, do I have a good neck that is also also critical hit chance or critical hit damage and attack here uh critical hit chance okay so this is oh wow it's gonna drop us even more but it is gonna up our critical hit damage let's actually take a look at what this build would kind of set us up to do so this is more of a hybrid build you're not relying on the 30 percent from attack you're kind of a mixture but you're going to be getting still that extra attack from the s1 we'll still assume rangars just for opening on the s3 uh, but let's see 3114 we're gonna do 264 in the critical hit damage assume everything is the same so the s one's going to be hitting for 6291 now with this build you are going to have 100 percent crit chance um, you are going to have a little bit more on the way of hit points in this build as well you are also going to be faster at 204 um, your S3 is going to be pretty weak at 8170, um, but you also get the strip, right? So that's going to be really big if you want to build tanky bruiser, uh, fast tanky bruiser, right? And so um, let's see, 
if you put on Song of Stars as well, you're going to have a uh, you're going to be able to put target and defense break for other people to come through and hit on them. Uh, if you run your Portrait of Saviors, if you soul burn the S1, which if you're in this build, I don't think you're going to want to soul burn the S1. Uh, you're going to want to use that for other things. She's going to be a very fast, high damage um, hitting target, right? So your opening hits on anybody who's 50% or higher going to be 7310 on your S1, uh 8136 on your S3. A lot of damage on that S1 is a very high damage devastating S1. Uh, and I think that if you run her with like I said a Rosa in this build, you're going to have a lot better time because you're going to be getting those dual attacks, you're going to be getting the increased damage when she's off and when it's not her turn. If you're running her with the likes, if you run her with like a Rosa and a Ross, right? You're going to be doing a lot of damage because that's going to be 30% increased damage. Um I believe that is what Rosa is. Uh, let's take a look real quick. So if you switch it to like, let's say a, do I even have a, I do have Rosa. So that's going to be increased attack. Uh, oh, this is dual crease to check 30% uh, increase attack, increases attack by 30% when it's not the caster's turn. So if you're running her with dual attackers, like uh, Kitty Clarissa, if you're running her with Lilius, if you're running her with Ross, uh, if she just gets random dual attacks, uh, that's going to be a lot of damage. And let's take a look at what this build would do if you just added in, we'll say no artifact, and we're going to increase that damage, uh, that attack by 30%. So on not her turns, um, she is going to be rocking about 7,500 attack double ups that is that is real real big damage right there especially considering you have the initial hit from your main person plus you have that increased um that increased damage coming from her so i uh, honestly i think that the build for me and then let's see if you triple s her so that'd be 48 percent. so there are 8300 damage speedy 204 speed very semi-tanky right that i think she was at like 11 1100 defense 13k hit points that's not bad at all uh, and this is to a 1200 defense target right let's say you're you're hitting a, a k-ron right who's gonna have like we'll put him at a thousand he's gonna have no defense whatsoever um that's gonna be 9500 damage that's gonna kill him that's that's just going to kill him with the S1. Um, chances are oh, you're going to do 18. You're probably going to kill him with the S3, honestly, uh, even with a Rosa on and it not being your turn. So I think um, after looking at all of this, I think that the build is going to be a fast tanky bruiser build with a Rosa that's probably going to be be the the kit now if like i said i showed you the numbers for if you're trying to cleave with her and it's it's real gross those numbers are preposterous she's going to just wipe everything um i think that that is a viable option fast bruiser is a viable option um mid-range high damage bruiser if you can get her a little bit higher in the um the attack i do think that she does benefit from a good mix of stats right but i think that you can make her work with a little bit less attack i know a lot of people are just going to stack nothing but attack i think though that if you're not running rangar's drink right if you're not trying to double up on the two passives the amount of extra damage that you get from that passive is just icing on the cake right you don't have to stack copious amounts of attack the reason why you can do that on an ssb is because she gets off attack uh off turn attacks and you're going to really re you really rely on that so you can just build her super thick super slow super high attack with uh you know minimum amounts of crit chance and crit damage and just you know rely on the drink procs but i think in the terms of a series you kind of have to have that blend of everything right um 
And I think that that's probably going to be the build. But let me know what you guys think. I think that our modifiers are really good. I think that, you know, even right now, like right here, this build without even hitting with the Rosa, 7200 on the S1 is pretty decent damage um, for a 204 speed tanky bruiser. I think that that is um definitely definitely acceptable and even if you're hitting if you're hitting a dark unit right now that's going to be 7783 right um let's say you hit a tank with 1500 i mean you're still hitting for almost 6k and i think that that is reasonable damage um now if they do put a defense buff up well you're gonna get just dunked on but everybody gets dunked on when there's a defense buffed up tank right uh, so I think that, um, oh yeah, if you put zero, <laughs> it's, it's way too much. Uh, but I think that overall, she's going to be a very big powerhouse, right? That opening S3, especially like I said, if you're going to cleave, uh, is going to be real, real big. And I think that just as a tanky bruiser, being able to also apply defense break on the S1 uh, is going to be really good. So whatever damage you didn't do, you're going to have somebody who can just follow up and just absolutely waste you. But let me know in the comments what you guys think. If you like these videos, uh, let me know if there's anything you'd like to see in these videos as well in the future. Um, let me know as well things that you'd like me to cover uh, in these. I'll do as much as I can. Again, I want to thank MAF for the making these. It's just so good. So good. I love this website. But as always, if you guys do like the content and you haven't yet, hit the subscribe button if you want to. Um, like and comment down below. It helps me beat the YouTube algorithm. I do have a Patreon if you want to help out the channel that way. But you can always help me out just by sharing this out to Facebook, Reddit, uh, Twitter, anywhere, uh, stove comments. Anytime you see people talking some stuff that you they need to be educated on. Um, or I need to be educated on. But anyways, guys, I'm going to get out of here. I'll catch you on the next one. Take it easy, homies. Peace. Thank you.